Welcome to the Medical Educator video diaries. As ever, unscripted, what you see is what you get. Now, what I'm going to do in this diary is talk through the ABC of medical ethics and use it to help frame a discussion around a case that's commonly cropping up in medical student exams, the right to refuse treatment. Um, so you may be presented with a scenario a 45-year-old woman with motor neuron disease wishes to have her antibiotic treatment withdrawn. Please discuss this. Well, using my ABC of ethics, this is actually a lot simpler than it may sound. So let's go through the ABCs of ethics first. A stands for autonomy, B for beneficence, C for confidentiality, D for do no harm, and E for equality also sometimes called justice. The first thing, A, is autonomy. And autonomy is the right of an individual to determine his or her own outcomes. In uh, respect to medicine, that's the right to decide um, healthcare treatments uh, for oneself. Um, and this is intrinsically linked with consent. So in terms of autonomy, from my perspective, although my doctor may wish me to take an antibiotic to treat um, a chest infection, it's my right to decide whether or not I want to take that antibiotic. Um, and I have the right to either consent to that treatment or withdraw my consent. The same goes for any practical procedure. Uh, my family doctor may feel that I need an endoscopy for whatever reason. And it's actually my decision as to whether or not I consent for that procedure. And obviously, if I do consent, I have the right to withdraw my consent at any time. And that's a principle of autonomy. So, if we go back to the original case um, of, a, of a patient with motor neuron disease, the principle of autonomy would suggest they have the right to decline the treatment. Um, beneficence is the second principle, B. And really, that's the idea that a medical practitioner should be aiming to provide benefit from whatever treatment is. So as a practitioner deciding to give antibiotics to a patient in any situation, the idea would be that the outcome of giving the treatment would actually be beneficial to the patient. Um, and that's a very simple way of thinking about it, but actually is also very important. We talked about C, the right to confidentiality. And that's an ethical principle that means that a patient's treatment is, uh, should be confidential and that means that it can't be discussed with anybody without their consent. That includes uh, a person's partner, a person's child or sibling. And although there are some exceptional grounds where uh, confidentiality can be broken, for example, in a court of law, um, this is a real significant aspect, and, and to, the decision to, to break confidentiality would be considered to be very serious. If you're presented with a medical exam uh, where, in a situation where you were tempted to break confidentiality, my response would always be that I would discuss it either with a senior colleague, the concepts of breaking the confidentiality, or with a medical legal defence organisation who may be able to point you more towards the legalities of of the discussion and breaking confidentiality. Um, so looking at A, B, C, we're moving on to D, do no harm, also called non-maleficence. And that's really uh, going back to Latin of first do no harm, the solid principles behind the fact that the doctor should be aiming to help um, whatever they're doing, they shouldn't be harming the patient as a result of it. So, for example, giving a very rigorous course of chemotherapy to a patient or uh, subjecting a patient with motor neuron disease to a significant surgical procedure, which may actually cause more distress and suffering to the patient than, uh, uh, than a benefit, then that's the ethical principle of uh, non-maleficence or do no harm. So we've covered A, B, C and D. And finally, to E, equality or justice. And that's really looking at how healthcare resources are shared across individuals, irrespective of race, age, 
physical disabilities. Now, this may seem very simple principle when comparing a person with a disability to a person who is otherwise in good physical health. So, no one would argue against the provision of allowing someone in a wheelchair to have a chest x-ray. However, the situation can become more uh, complicated uh, in terms of people's personal prejudices when you take the example of a prisoner in um, a maximum security prison following committing a certain crime. Now, ethical principles of uh, equality here would suggest that the treatment for that patient's health should be of equal quality to anybody else. Now, certain individuals may argue this, but that is the ethical principle of equality. So let's go back to our original situation of a patient with motor neurone disease uh, who wishes to have antibiotic treatments withdrawn. Using the principle of autonomy, assuming that the patient has capacity, i.e. the capacity to weigh up and make decisions for themselves, really, on that single principle alone, the patient should have their antibiotic treatments withdrawn. And really, um, it's that simple understanding of the patient has the right to decide their own treatments, investigations, management, etc., allows you to make a very simple case in terms of an ethical principles, the five ethical principles, to making a sensible argument to support any um, ethical case in an exam situation.